How many patches do I have to have to be a considered a real life correctional content creator anyways? In this video, I'm gonna tell you a story. I have to let my daughter out of the studio real quick. In this video, I'm gonna tell you a story about my dinner the other night. So if you don't wanna hear a story, I recommend you go watch that Flat Earth documentary that you've been dying to check out. Spoiler, the Earth is fucking round! Hey, before I dive in, I wanted to thank all the folks that take time to comment on the videos and offer my congratulations to all of you who are just starting your correctional journey. Good luck! I'm sure you'll do fine. And make sure you keep in touch. Some of you don't keep in touch, and I'm not sure if you are making it, being successful, or you're dead in a ditch somewhere. So I went to dinner Friday, the old steak and potatoes, a local place where you used to be able to throw peanuts on the floor, but we can't do that no more. Fucking COVID. So the waitress walks us to our table, and it's almost perfect. Against the wall at the back of the restaurant, I can see everything. It's almost if the waitress knew that I had a condition that required this exact position. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe you new boots don't, but you will. So we get to the table and guess what? Yes! Right next to us is a couple of recently released convicts and their significant others. <laughs> Motherfucker! Check, please! <laughs> Are you kidding me? So now I shift from the Friday night dinner with the wife mode to watching these guys out of the corner of my eye while I eat mode. <laughs> and this is just one of those things. An example of how the job, of how the profession follows us, affects us on the outside. Why I say it's impossible to leave work at work and home at home. Because we see people on the street when we're out and about. <laughs> and you're out of your fucking gourd if you think you're going to be ignored because you're off duty. Have you ever been approached, spotted, confronted by a former client? Tell me what happened. I'd like to know. Leave it in the comment below. Did you just tell them that you're only an officer on the inside from 3 to 11? And that you'd appreciate it if they respected your ability to separate your personal life from your professional life. <laughs> how stupid that work at work stuff is so we sit down next to these two tattooed gentlemen and it begins i'm sort of listening to my wife and sort of listening to them i'm picking up pieces from both tables the big guy just got out my wife wants her steak well done the little guy rides a harley with a loaded baked potato big boy said something about a co do i recognize him i don't think so do they recognize me i don't know did he even say co my wife wants a side salad with ranch and i can have her croutons fuck the croutons i got convicts at my nine o'clock spider web tattoos check brick wall tattoos check tattoo teardrops one two three Okay, what do I want to do tomorrow? I don't care about tomorrow because I'm working right now. And then my wife nudges me and says, does that, meaning them, make you uncomfortable? Yep, and she gets it. We've been together for like a hundred years, but let me explain it to you. And this is important. I was uncomfortable because I was trained to be uncomfortable, to be on guard, hypervigilant, inside, all the time. See, I carry myself differently when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's a different mindset than when I sit down to eat a steak dinner with the missus. Are you tracking? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I try to act differently around civilians. Sheep, than I do when I'm around the wolves. And I hope you do too. So when I'm out in public and I see a potential threat, I change. I have to. I was trained to. Look, I don't know if these two guys knew me, recognized me, if they could tell that I was a jailer. I didn't know if there'd be a problem or not. So yeah, I spent the entirety of my dinner on the edge of my seat. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't scared. I was just ready. I was just prepared. Just like I am on the inside, in uniform. And guess what happened? Nothing fucking happened. They just sat there and talked and ate and probably had a good fucking date. Meanwhile, I'm just pushing my food around my plate, letting my beer get warm so I can stay sober just in case. Now I said nothing happened, but that was a lie. Because something did happen. Inside. See, when your body feels threatened, it releases stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, preparing your body for whatever is about to happen. So my heart was pounding, my blood pressure was rising, which, by the way, remind me to take my blood pressure medicine before I go to dinner next time. My breath quickened and I felt like, well... Like, I was at work. 
Here's the dangerous part of this whole thing for those of you who are still there. You know, YouTube tells me when you guys leave. Shame, shame, shame. Number one. Some of us live in this fantasy world where we think that the job doesn't change the way that we behave. And ignoring that is like ignoring a cancer diagnosis. Because it does change the way that we behave on the outside. When I posted this on my Facebook page, people told me to switch tables. To leave. To make a scene. To make sure that I wear clothes that aren't pro-LEO. <laughs> and all of this was because I'm a CO. <laughs> oh shit, did a little light bulb just turn on for you? Are these people suggesting that I change my behavior the way I live <laughs> because of my occupation? Judges? Ha <laughs> ha, be damned. Look, I know that the cool kids will say that they're okay, that they just leave it at the gate, but <laughs> that news is fake. Because I'm telling you right here and right now that this job comes with change, good and bad. And failure to acknowledge those changes can be dangerous and even deadly. So we need to discuss these things, these topics, with friends and family, with those that are closest to us, so they know, so we can all grow, so we can all end this crazy race in one piece. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all I got. Now get, if you like this video, if you found value in this video, straight punch that little like icon. Like, comment, and share this content with anyone and everyone that you think may be interested. Subscribe and click that little bell so you're notified every time I release another video. And if you're looking for more correctional content, head on over to my Facebook page. I'll post the link in the description below so you know where to go. All right, guys, that's all I got. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon. Hey, 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 yeah, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Ay, 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 uh, yeah, 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 let's go. I really do have a lot of patch. I got one here from, from Pennsylvania, from, from Nebraska, from the, from the, from the state here. I got one from, from Guardian RFID right here. I got one from, uh, Apex Officer. That's, that's pretty cool. I got this one in 2009 from Wyoming, uh, DOC. I got, I got the old American, I, but I need patches. I need more patches. I got I can't be an LEO content creator, correctional content creator without patches. So send me your patches. No, right now, I, I really want you to put patches in the mail and send me your patches. Patches? We don't need no stinking patches. <laughs>